Hello everybody, welcome to ECMATH. This is P.5 Part 2, where we're going to talk about some advanced factoring techniques, and the first one we're going to talk about is the difference and sum of cubes formulas. These are formulas that I think uh, most people should know about. Uh, you need to know that these exist, but you do not need to memorize these. I think it's fair, as long as you know that they're kind of out there, uh, it's okay to look them up when you need them. Um, unless you're on math team, in which case I think you probably should memorize these. Uh, so let's wind back to like the last video and do a uh, look at a difference of squares pattern. So here we had 4x squared minus 25, and we notice that everything here is a perfect square. So the pattern would uh, indicate that this should multiply into 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. So there was something for difference of squares. Notice that there was not a pattern for sum of squares. 4x squared plus 25 is prime. So you can only do the difference of squares when you have that, that subtraction in the middle, hence the word difference. Um, let's look at something else. It's called a difference of cubes pattern. Uh, so in a difference of cubes pattern, what you'll notice is that you have uh, some number cubed, you have minus sign, and you have some number cubed. Right, so 8's a perfect cube, it's 2 to the third. Uh, and the pattern for difference of cubes goes like this. It factors into a minus b. And I'm trying to do this from memory. Uh, and then the rest of the pattern, it kind of turns into a perfect square, so it's going to be a trinomial. So you're going to have an a squared. You're going to have an a b. And you're going to have a b squared. And that's uh, how this factors out. What you notice is compared to a perfect square, it's not 2ab. If that was perfect square, there'd be a 2. I'm going to make, there, make a note that there's no 2 there to make it a perfect square. Um, and then there needs to be some signs there, and there's a rule for the signs, if I remember it right. It's, uh, hmm, hmm, I believe this should be plus and plus. Now let's try the pattern on x cubed minus 8. So this should factor, if that pattern is true, into x minus 2, right, because a is x, and b is 2. And remember, the minus is built into the equation. And then it should be x squared plus 2x, that's ab, plus b squared, which is 4. Now I want to check this by multiplying it back out. Right? So we'll do the x in, so we'll get x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4x plus, uh, what do we got, minus 2x squared minus 4x and minus 8. Uh, I feel like I said a lot of things twice, so a lot of things cancel out, and we do get x cubed minus 8. So this is the example of a difference of cubes factoring uh, situation. It's, it's a pattern that uh, some folks probably, you know, many years ago were multiplying out and factoring a bunch, and they noticed that every time you have a difference of cubes, it will factor this way. Um, you know, I, I would not have been able to discover this myself, but uh, I'm happy to use the discoveries of others to help me in factoring. And I think it is nice. It kind of reminds me of difference of squares when you put it back together and how kind of all the middle terms end up canceling out. It's just that perfect balance of middle terms that makes things cancel out. Um, usually in difference of squares, the trinomial that's left, it almost looks like a perfect square, but it's missing that 2. So usually that ends up being prime. That is, it doesn't factor any further. Uh, so usually with difference of cubes, this is about as far as you can get. Now what's really cool to me about cubics is that there is actually a pattern for the sum of cubes. So it's okay if we have something like a cubed plus b cubed. And here's the pattern for sum of cubes. And again, I'm doing this from memory, so it'll take a second. So it's going to be a plus b. And then for sum of cubes, the pattern is actually the same. You get an a squared, you have an ab with no 2, and then a b squared. So again, just almost like a perfect square, but kind of uh, missing that, that middle 2. But then the signs here are negative, positive. And let's check that pattern. So here my a is x, and my b is the cube root of 27 is 3. So this should factor into x plus 3 and x squared minus 3x plus 
b squared, which is 9. Let's multiply this all back out and double check. That's the x. Let's bring the 3 in. Feels like a lot of things will cancel again. Look at that. And I get x cubed plus 27. So that difference, uh, or sorry, the sum of cubes factoring also works. And again, we can look at this and we might, you know, try to factor it, but this is usually going to end up being prime. Uh, so we've just factored out the x plus 3 from that sum of cubes. So sum of cubes is actually really helpful to know just because, you know, the more factoring tricks you know, the easier and more confident you're going to be with all sorts of factoring all over the place. Uh, so let's write out the patterns one more time and then I'll talk about how it is not as hard as you think to, to get those into your memory. And there's a nice mnemonic for it. Uh, so the pattern was a cubed plus b cubed turns into a plus b a squared uh, minus ab plus b squared while a cubed minus b cubed turned into a minus b times a squared plus uh, ab plus b squared. And this is where the mnemonic comes in. The mnemonic, uh, which is, you know, the way you remember stuff uh, often, is SOAP. SOAP stands for same, opposite, and then always positive. And what SOAP refers to are the signs. Same, opposite, and always positive. And when we say same, what do we mean the same? We mean the same as whether it uh, was plus or minus in the original factor thing that it was asking you to factor. So we have a cubed plus b cubed is a plus b, then a squared minus a b opposite plus b squared always positive. For the minus, we have a cubed minus b cubed turns into a minus b, same sign, a squared plus AB opposite, and then always positive plus B squared. So the signs can be remembered with the easy acronym SOAP, S-O-A-P, same opposite, always positive. And then you just have to remember the form, which is kind of easy, right? It's AB, right? Just like normal factoring. And then you have this thing that's almost a perfect square. That's how I think about it. It's just like a it's imperfect square because it's missing that middle two. Um, and so that's how I make this connection, how I remember it. I think it's nice to know. Do you need to know it? No, but it's nice to know. Uh, I wanted to do a couple more examples, maybe just, oh yeah, two more examples, uh, one of each with things a little more complicated. So say I had 27x cubed minus one. You get like, oh man, that I don't want to factor this. Um, and again, these are actually really good to use. You kind of need another trick for it because you can't, it's a cubic. So you can't do like quadratic things on it. You can't use the quadratic formula. You also don't have a common factor, so you can't do that. Uh, but you don't have middle terms, so you can't do factoring by grouping, which is what you'd usually do with a cubic. So it's kind of resistant to all other things except this difference of cubes. So let's identify, is this of the form a cubed minus b cubed? Yes, it is. This is 3x cubed minus 1 cubed. 1 is a perfect cube, so 3x is a and 1 is b. So the pattern is going to be, and I like to write, you know, I'm, I don't do this every day, so I do like to write the pattern above. Uh, it's going to be a squared, a, b, b squared. It's going to be uh, same sign, opposite sign, always positive. Same, opposite, always positive. So I should have 3x minus 1. That's the a minus b. I should have a 9x squared. Then ab should be uh, 3x times 1, or just 3x. And then 9x squared plus 3x plus b squared, which is 1. 
and that should work out. Um, I trust myself enough that I'm not going to foil it back out, but if you really want to check your work, you could multiply that all back out and see if it works out. It should. Let's do another one. 8x cubed plus 125. Again, something you really don't want to factor by hand. It looks easy because you're like, oh, yeah, 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 I can just factor it. But it's missing an x or anything that you would really like to have. Uh, but it is true that 8 is 2x cubed and 125 is 5 cubed. So my a is 2x and my b is 5. This is a sum of cubes. So the pattern should be... Uh, a, B, then I have A squared, A, B, and B squared. The signs go same, opposite, always positive. I write out the pattern, then I plug it into the factorization. So I should have 2x plus 5. Uh, A squared should be 4x squared. A, B, and this is where it can get a little tricky, but I if you've written out your a and your b, it's not really that bad. Uh, so 2x times 5 should be 10x, and b squared should be 25. So it turns out, why can't I write? turns out that this factors perfectly down into 2x plus 5, and then a quadratic 4x squared minus 10x plus 25. Uh, why would you do this? Well, say that you were trying to uh, graph this. To graph it, you might want to find the zeros. You can't really find the zeros like this, but you could find the zero here. Uh, it would be at negative 5 over 2. And then to find the zeros here, now that it's a quadratic, you could do something like use the quadratic formula, the QF, uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of blah, 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 uh, to find the roots of that. And so by simplifying it down, you're actually able to fully reduce it more using other mathematical tools. But without that tool of difference of cubes, you're kind of stuck. That's it for today, I believe. Uh, so, you know, you can, again, you don't have to memorize the difference of cubes pattern. I find it helpful to at least know about. And if I'm doing a lot of them in a row, I'll try to kind of remember the pattern. Um, but, you know, it's going to happen that in chapter uh, two or three or four, you see it, you'll, you'll run into a difference of cubes. And you won't, if you don't know that the pattern even exists, you will be totally stuck on that problem. Um, so it's really nice to know. Thank you guys for watching. That's it today. Uh, we'll hit some tricky exponent factoring in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.